Don't Sneak This Podcast. Greg uh, in the closet. Uh, I guess you could say back in the building. George couldn't be here today. Obviously, it's graduation season. Uh, we appreciate, you know, we thank everybody who listens to the podcast. We appreciate all our Spotify listeners, iTunes. We appreciate our YouTube viewership. We appreciate everybody who likes, shares, subscribe. We appreciate everybody who reviews. Uh, one thing we always want to do is make sure we do a weekly and continuous um, episode uh, for our listeners. You know, one thing that we like to promote is getting everybody through the work week. You know, if you love sneakers, it's just getting through the work week. Even if you might not agree or like a lot of the stuff that we say, it just gets you through the work week. And that's all we, you know, we can ask for. And that's all we can do to make sure we're, we provide something to this culture that we participate in. Uh, uh, congratulations to all the graduates, you know, whether it's high school, college, you know, promotions for elementary school. I have a five-year-old, six-year-old promoting the first grade, so he's super excited. Uh, we're definitely doing that. And George is actually at a graduation dinner right now for uh, his wife's niece, I believe. So congratulations to her. Um, and, you know, I've done this before in the closet, done it by myself before. You know, some of you like the sound of my voice, some of you hate the sound of my voice, some of you hate my opinions. Uh, but, you know, like I said... Just giving you some content through the week. And, uh, you know, I'm possibly doing another episode this week with Shanghai. You know, kind of get an update on uh, how Shanghai uh, sneaker con went. You know, kind of see how that went. Get an understanding of that, what took place. And uh, going from there. So, one thing that I do like to do when I do the podcast from the closet is try to show uh, a few of my favorite sneakers. And I'm kind of going off of a little bit of a theme here. It's like a collaboration theme. Hopefully the camera looks okay and I can get them on camera. Uh, I'm not used to this and that's why I always pay much respect to those who do sneaker reviews and can show on the camera and, you know, talk and do that. I can't tell if someone's on the camera or not. Although this podcast is very clear and high definition and looks awesome on YouTube and on your Instagram and Facebook and, and all social media, we have no idea what we're doing with a camera, but I we somehow put it together every single week. So hopefully you guys can see the sneakers and everything and I can talk about them a little bit. So as I said, this is sort of a collaboration type thing with my latest pickup. So I'm going through my collaborations to show you guys some of my personal favorites in my closet. I think a lot of times we discuss and talk about sneakers so much that people might wonder, and which if you did wonder, I perfectly understand it. George and I aren't the boisterous type. We talk about our pickups, we talk about things we sell and stuff, but we don't post every single day what we rock and what we have and in closet in-depth review and stuff like that. So whenever we do have the opportunity, we try to do so. You know, shout out to George's wife, Hannah. She tries to send me pictures of George's sneakers because he definitely won't do it. So I definitely appreciate her. So first sneaker, if you listen to this podcast, if you know me, I like everything. Shout out to the homie John King. John King thinks I I don't like Fila's. I love Fila's. I also love Reeboks. A lot of Reeboks. You probably can't tell on the camera. You can see a little bit of blue. Those are Reeboks to the ceiling. That's a 100% fact. I'm going to show you one of my very, very favorite Reeboks. And it's a collaboration with Packer Shoes and the Reebok Omni Pump. Love this. So... Obviously, hopefully this is on camera and everything. We have the Pump It Up, the classic Pump It Up box. Reebok, Omnis. These are a size 9.5. Court Victory Pumps. Not Omnis. I don't know why I kept saying Omnis. This is a Packers Reebok Tennis collaboration. So a lot of you guys might recognize this sneaker because Michael Chang tennis player used to rock these and i know you guys see the agassiz dropping this week and we're going to talk about that later um this is one of my favorite sneakers of all time this is to me a top 25 collaboration of all time i know george and i have done our top collaboration list and i probably left this off and forgot it but when you have so many sneakers you just kind of forget this right here is covered it's to mimic the clay so when the French Open, they play on a clay surface with tennis, and the clay gets all over your stuff. If anybody have ever touched a clay surface in tennis, it is an absolute mess. It's like running around in red desert dirt. Like you're covered in it, and it stains everything. So what they did was, this is an all-canvas shoe, and they put the red clay splatter all over it. And you know every time I rock these, there's always that one guy, fam, your shoes are dirty. All right, go eat some corn. Shut up, okay? 
Um, I remember I wore this to one of the first sneaker events I went to out here. I'm talking, I couldn't even get in the building before somebody walked up with the, the corn. Fam, you came to a sneaker, a sneaker event with beaters? Yes, yes I did, thank you. Uh, but this is one of the best collaborations of all time by Packer Shoes. Um, like I said, the all canvas, obviously it's the Reebok is dope, it has the pump with the tennis ball material the red clay splattered all the way through all the way on the back these joints are fire these aren't easy to find if you find a pair in a nine and a half or a ten tag me in it so i could tell you i'm not copying anything right now i'm just joking i might think about it another one of my favorite sneakers of all time which I feel like is highly disrespected by swoosh, Nike, uh, connoisseurs, and Air Max heads, is the Air Stab. Now, the Air Stab isn't technically an Air Max, but it falls in that runner family, and it came out during uh, when all the original and OGs were dropping back in the day. This is a Atmos Mita collaboration, an Air Stab. Uh, this is an OG. If anybody knows me, I love OG sneakers, okay? I do uh, you can see the yellow. You could even see probably the air bubbles cracked. It started cracking a little bit when I walked. I don't know if you get that on camera. Like I said, I respect everybody who knows how to get sneakers on camera and talk. Uh, like I said, this is an air stab. This joint is absolute fire. This is an Atmos Mita collaboration, I believe. Has the red toe suede butter. Has a little bit of hint of a patent leather gray got the gold swoosh it got the elephant print it got that antique that antique look on the outsole of sneakers is so underrated and new balance has been dropping some five seven four sports shout out to my guy rick teves been dropping some fire sneakers with that vintage sole like this uh ryan swanger i posted a pair he had rocked and it was the gray or the navy blue pair i can't believe but that vintage yellowish where it comes like that it doesn't turn that way now these might have turned this way a little bit uh, but this is definitely a vintage look and feel i think i've wore these maybe twice these are originals well these are when they originally dropped i think it was Jeez, let me see um i can't even tell looking in here i don't remember this might have been like 2004 maybe 2006 i believe love these uh when air stabs drop i suggest everybody own a pair of air stabs but just a fair warning these right here are definitely one of the most uncomfortable sneakers of all time not even a question one of the most uncomfortable sneakers of all time if this sneaker was created to run you ain't running nowhere but the podiatrist all right because your feet they're jacked up About to bring out some fire to me. Top five greatest ASICs of all time. Possibly to me, the greatest ASIC of all time. This is a Concepts collaboration. ASICs Gel Life 5. Um, and the Gel Life 5 is highly disrespected by sneaker connoisseurs. We were loving it at one point when we thought we were all grown up. And then we just let it fade away. Um, presentation is everything when we talk about a collaboration. And there's nothing better than a, a special box but a special box has to be accompanied by a fire shoe let's get that straight stop buying sneakers for the box and the sneaker is trash all right just for the record cut it out it's not necessary all right um so these are the eight balls i like to call them the cocaines all right Hopefully this is on camera. Got the Cobra on it. Got the CC for that cocaine. Got that duct tape. Got that plastic on it. Presentation, all right? Presentation is an understatement. We had Dion Point on, you know, who's one of the uh, the marketing, creative marketer or whatever of concepts. Uh, hopefully we get him on again. Um, he told us a story about this and how they released it and set this up. You know, they set up like a Miami scene with the helicopter, like they AK 47s. Like they made it seem like you were coming to buy drugs. Actually, you know what? Was that this one? I believe that was this one. They did that. Um, and I think in New York, they set it up like a trap house or like a drug joint where you could come and copy your pairs. I can't remember. I could be getting my stories mixed up. But this right here, coming in the mail in a gigantic box wrapped in plastic, all the way wrapped in plastic, I had to cut it open to open it just like you cut that cocaine. <sighs> I'm joking. I've never done that before in my entire life. But I assume when you sniff cocaine like that, it, anyways. Um, 
So, let me open it. So, like I said, the plastic is wrapped with the duct tape. You got the cobra on it, the cocaine wrapped up. When you cut the bottom of the package open to open the sneakers, you got to put your plastic back over. You got to put it back over the good. You got to keep it fresh, man, before you process it. All right? I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm out here. All right? Got that on top of that. Let me go ahead and take that off. And like I and, and for those who listen on iTunes, we definitely appreciate it on Spotify. This might be the segment where you want to check out the YouTube video and see exactly what I'm talking about and see the sneakers and understand it. All right. I'm gonna show you why these are so dope. All right. These joints right here, that off-white. You got that off-white, that cocaine. All right. That's that pure. Mm. That coconina, that coconina. Is that what's called cocaine? You got the red, the red that represents the blood. Inside, I hope I can get this on camera. Inside is your nosebleed. So, you sniff it too much, you've been, you know, ain't doing it right, I don't know. You get the drips of the nosebleed inside, fire. Putting the drips of the blood inside the shoe is one of those details that makes something a little special. Now, I'm not a big fan of stuff going on the insole because you can't see it. But it makes it a little special knowing that, that they, they pay attention to those type of details. That plastic on the outside, mmm, joints are fire. Let me show you my absolute favorite part. Look at that. Wrapped up. Wrapped up, okay? These are one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Asics to me. And don't act like I'm dissing Ronnie Fog, lavas and stuff like that. Love them. I said to me. And if you listen to this podcast, anything you say is valid as long as you throw on the to me. Let me go ahead and put this down, get one more look. One of my favorites of all time. Shout out to Concepts for that. But let me show you what makes this really special. The laces. Okay, look at that. And the vial. You got the vial in there. You got, I think they gave us four extra laces, okay? Putting the laces in a vial like this adds to it. It does. It might not add much value to it. You might be the only person that sees this in your sneakers unless you do a review or something like this. But having them put this like the vial in here, like, like crack rock, having this fire. Let's talk about the extra laces that comes with sneakers. A lot of times the laces that come in the sneakers that, you know, when you originally open the box, I'm usually fine with those. I rarely swap laces. There was an era buying the Asics, New Balances, and a lot of stuff from Kith where we were swapping the laces out for rope laces. People try to act like and ignore it, but rope laces were in, all right? You were ordering rope laces off eBay for every colorway. I mean, Katz was out here doing it, you know? Um, shout out to Sneakerhead Clothing. You know, they make fire laces as well. Check them out. Um... But providing laces, I'm talking laces with 3M, flat laces and rope laces, all right? Putting them in this vial to stick with the theme of the crack, the cocaine theme, the era, is absolutely incredible. It's incredible detail. It's incredible attention to detail. It makes you feel just that much special about something you got. I love these, but it's something about the presentation in the box that makes me love them even more. If they came in the regular blue ASIC box, I might not love them as much. Sorry, I'm just being honest with you. Let me show you some of the attention to detail. I remember when George and I got our pairs. I think George. Yeah, George has a pair as well. When George got our pairs, I remember they had the laces, the red, the off-white gray. And we could see why you would have those colors. But we didn't understand. Sorry, trying to open up the vial. We didn't understand why they had these blue with like this bright. I'm sorry, they're yellow with like a bright metallic blue thread in them i guess uh that's what it's considered when you look at them up close the blue is a little shiny and the yellow we were like yo these joints don't match the shoe so obviously the shoe's off white and you throw these laces and you like huh like this doesn't go you know what this is so we're talking about an era all right i mean it's probably still like that to this day i don't know but we're talking about an era and we're talking about concepts dion and the concepts team's attention to detail this is the colors of the visa card so when you take your card certain people who like to live that lifestyle they take that card and they mix it up they go ahead and spread them lines out with the card they tap it they chop it tap it whatever they do with a card you know the drill don't act like you ain't watched a movie or two don't act like you don't watch power don't act like you ain't watch blow 
Don't act like you didn't watch Scarface. I don't act like you didn't watch it. Scarface being one of the most overrated movies of all time, 100% fact. And the movie was awful. Visually beautiful shot. The movie was awful. The acting was awful. And the movie was awful. Love to watch it. Awful. Much better drug movies out there. American Gangster blows Scarface out of the water. I'm on a tangent. Back to the laces. Visa card. That's the color. The gold. The blue. Line it up. Woo! Sneakers. Mm. Uh, last and not least. Boy, that last sniff. I'm about to make me sneeze. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> woo! Last sneakers. Uh, recent pickup. Surprise drop by Packer Shoes. Much appreciated by Packer. Uh, what they did was... <coughs> woo! So... Last, which is my pickup, which I had talked about the other week, uh, was a surprise drop by Packer. I love surprise drops. Surprise drops are dope because you don't find out until somebody tells you. I love that. And I would love, and I know we talk about, yo, stores should just put them on the shelves. I would love that, but I would never get a pair then because I don't go anywhere. So putting them online, sure. Now, the odds of me just randomly checking a website, it is what it is. But somebody will, and after they cop, they're going to spread the word, and I appreciate that. We're talking about the box. Box is cool. It's a classic boost box, you know, but they spruced it up a bit. You know, they added the top three colorways or the OG colorways of the Ultra Boost. And, you know, when you talk about the Ultra Boost, please be, please be respectful. We're talking about the Ultra Boost as being probably one of the most important sneakers of all time. It's a top ten most iconic sneaker of all time. George and I have talked about it numerous times on this podcast. The Ultra Boost is sitting right there next to the Jordan 11. It's sitting right there next to the Foam Posit. It's sitting right there next to uh, Air Tech Challenges. It's sitting right next there to um, Pumps. It's sitting right next to Jordans. It's sitting right next to all the most iconic things of all time. Ultra Boost is an era. Ultra Boost is something that's very important. And this collaboration with Packer uh, entails the original OG colorways, I believe. That's what it's supposed to represent of the Ultra Boost when it dropped. So, um, it came with a card. You know, and Packer is really good at uh, providing you like a little handwritten note. This was typed up, but the note, you know, they, the I guess the owner, Mike, he said, enjoy, Mike. And they write down the number that your sneaker is. My sneaker is 342 of 500. Um, and that's dope. And you know, you like to say that. And the card, and I'm going to read the card for those who might not have had a pair and get to see the card. But it says right place at the right time. That was their whole sort of marketing theme for it. Uh, For a very long time, that was the name of the game. That feeling of walking into a store, falling in love at first sight with a shoe you never knew existed. The internet and social media have changed that forever. We wanted to bring it back. The Packer Times Adidas Ultra Boost OG pays homage to the introduction of one of the most important models of the new millennium. A shoe that took the entire industry by complete surprise and became an icon. (laughs) We took elements of the original three Ultra Boost colorways and combined them into one, into one shoe. 500 pairs, shelves, website, no warning. If you're holding this card, you were in the right place at the right time. Shout out to my guy, Robert. Uh, high tapes on uh, Instagram and high tapes on Twitter. If he didn't text me, yo, what you think of these? Are you copping? I would have never known about these. He sent me that before. Soul links, uh, boost links, and all the boost and sites and Twitter notifications before everybody. He sent it to me. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have got these. Shout out to him, and I definitely appreciate it. Uh, it comes with a hologram card, which transforms into like all the iconic, the original three Ultra Boosts when it first dropped. Um, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that's tight. We talk about we wish Jordan Brand would give us back the cards. This is iconic. This is something extra, okay? Obviously, it got the package stuff, paper, and some some packs came with a shoehorn, a Packer shoehorn. Um, I will say that I wish that they would have put on the website or something that the shoehorn was limited and not everybody would get them because it is a little disheartening when you see everybody post their pairs and they got the shoes, the box, the card, and a shoehorn. You get yours in the mail and you only got the box, the card, and the shoes. And you're like, huh? But it is what it is. Uh, So 
Here's the shoe. Ultra Boost. Uh, we've all seen an Ultra Boost 1.0 before. 1.0 Ultra Boost. You know, it doesn't matter how many Ultra Boosts they released right now. This is like the Jordan 1 of Ultra Boost. You can't get no better than this. I mean, the pattern, the model, the way the boost is laid out, the fit with your jeans. It, it's just, it's just, it just is what it is. Um, it's a great looking shoe. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. One thing that on this podcast that we definitely like to do is be honest as possible. On the website and all that and hearing the story and everything, you're like, yo, you got to have it, which is completely understandable. You know, you're like, I, I got to have this. I need it. It's fire. Bam. I got a pair. And then you get it in the mail and I just don't know what happened with Adidas. <laughs> like, it's a great looking shoe. And I've seen a lot of on foot peaks and they on, on foot picks and they look dope. But in hindsight, it's just an ultra boost. Like, it's just an Ultra Boost split in three quarters. Not saying it's not dope, but it's just an Ultra Boost. Um, I like the way it looks, and I know they're going to look fire on. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to wear them one day. I'm not sure when. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I will say I was disappointed was there's no extra laces. Uh, the black laces are fine, but, you know, I feel like with something as special as these... It should have came with extra pair of laces. Like, it should have came with the... I don't know if these original pairs had the same color laces. I can't remember. I don't know if they had Volt laces with the Volt pair or Navy laces with the Navy or the OG and whatever it was, the purple or neon orange or solar red, whatever color this is for the original. But it'd be dope to have all three of those colors to, you know, have lace options. I will say another thing is weird, and I've noticed this with a lot of sneaker companies like Nike, Adidas, you know, everybody. You're starting to get shoes in the mail without paper in it. No paper, no insert, no nothing like that. Now, that's something that's minimal. I got literally balls of paper just wrapped up in here that I keep on sneakers that I decide to beat or sneakers I get rid of. I keep the paper. Unless I sell them, then obviously I put the paper inserts in them. Um, I've talked about this last time I did episode in the closet. The paper, I don't believe in sneaker deodorizers and stuff. I don't. Febreze, Lysol, I don't, I mean, you can spray Lysol, that works. But the best way to de deodorize your sneakers is to keep the paper in it and keep the inserts in it. The paper and the inserts soak up all that smell. It's cardboard, soaks up all the smell, and it soaks up all the sweat and oils from rocking a pair of sneakers that day. You don't got to buy deodorizers and, yo, make sure your feet smell fresh and, you know, spray your shoes after everywhere. You don't got to do all that. All you got to do is come home, let them air out a little bit. Push that paper back in, push uh, the insert back in, and you're good. So if that's wet, you smell your sneaker the next day, it smells just like the paper, and it smells just like day one. Now, unless your feet really funky, I got nothing for you. All right, now, if you rock your sneakers barefoot as well, look, I got nothing for you, fam. All right, I'm just giving you a, a friendly tip. All right, but like I said, I appreciate Packer, you know, their release of this. It was very unique, and I've noticed that a few other companies have been doing that over the last few weeks with some surprise drops. I think um, Yeezy's last night dropped with the Glow V2s on surprise, you know, and I was able to get a friend from my, a pair from my friend, so shout out to him. Um, but like I said, these are great. I love them. Wish I had extra laces. Wish I got a wood shoehorn. Um, I wish it came with paper. Now, I'm going to put some paper in it because I got plenty of Ultra Boosts and paper and stuff left and available. But, you know, it's just those little details that do matter. Um, I don't see prices on these skyrocketing. I think I was under the assumption like, dang, only 500 pairs. People are going to lose their minds. I think that lost their mind day one. Um, I think it's already over. I think it kind of faded away. You could get a pair right now for, you know, 340 something like that. And that's still high for an Ultra Boost. But it's it's doable. Like let's not act like we ain't never did it before, listeners. All right, there are very we come far and few uh, people on here who spend less than three hundred on a pair of sneakers before. So you know, don't act you know brand new with me. All right, but you can get yourself a pair of these, and you know I definitely appreciate. Like I said, the Packer shoes. Um, other pickups this week. Uh, like I said, I grabbed my friend a pair of the Yeezy Glows. Um, got him a size 13. Shout out to Seth. That's the homie. I don't know if he's keeping them or if he's giving them to uh, my nephew, Isaiah Freeney. Shout out to him. One of the best basketball players in the state of Arizona. Check him out. Um, go South Mount Jaguars. Um, what else? I think that's it. I didn't try for much. Um, I tried the camera 
sneaker cam thing today for the, uh, I think it's New York City, the Paris pair of SB Jordan 1s. I'm not super high on Jordan 1 SBs. I never really have been. I think the Lance Mountains were cool. They were dope. Obviously, only the black pair. I didn't care for the white pair. Um, and the that green, I think that was another Lance Mountain 2 where it was like a greenish color or like a pearl or something. Uh, whatever it was. Um, I didn't really care for those that much either. These ones, I do like the Laker Bulls colorway one. I think that's cool. But like me and George have talked before, I'm kind of over the high top Jordan 1. I think the only high top Jordan 1 I genuinely want are are just uh, unions. Like, you know, hopefully one day they release again or I doubt it. I don't even know why I said that or, or something where I could find a pair, even a pair that's beat. You know, I just I like the shoe and I, I want a pair. Um, so I, I, I tried for the Paris ones today. I think I tried more as like trade bait or something that I could flip, use that money to get something I really want or use that money to put towards something else. I don't know. I've been really on a new balance kick lately, so I've been kind of really feeling that. You go in these waves as a sneakerhead. Like, and I talked about it before um filming from the closet. You go on these waves as sneakerheads and it can be a bad thing. Um I remember that era when George and I and Ryan were like buying up ASICs and New Balances like we lost our mind. I mean, we were, it was at one point we were only wearing ASICs and only wearing New Balances. I mean, we still have some of those pairs. Um, that's when like you were on Kith, you know, you were looking for the Kith drop. You were looking for that, that Black Friday New Balance or Black Friday ASICs. Like you was looking for it. Um, and all the collaborations were so dope with ASIC and New Balance. Um, you could get in this this weird wave. So, like, I think in the last however long, I've probably bought about four or five New Balances. And I'm just liking the feel of them. I'm liking the way they go with my gear. I'm just, I'm just really liking them right now. And I always say to the people, I say, you got to be careful with these waves. Because these waves come, and we've all been there. We've been there where we've been that sneakerhead, and we're like, Yo, I'm only buying Air Max 1s now. And then a year later, you're sitting on top of about 47 Air Max 1s, and then you don't like them anymore. Because that wave, it eventually fades away. All it takes is for one dope pair to come out, or for you to like go into your closet and put something classic on and be like, yo, these 95s are kind of hidden. It'll make you forget that wave that you collected. So I always tell sneakerheads, be super duper careful when you get on these crazy waves because you went over three years in and you got 147 Air Max 1s and now you're trying to figure out how to get rid of them because now you love 97s or you know something about the Jordan 5 is speaking to you lately. Watch them waves. Uh, I don't think I have any other pickups or anything I tried for. Um, you know what? I didn't even look up what comes out this week. Um, let me see. So, sneakers that come out this week, I think today. I'll tell you this. Oh, so, uh, shout out to Steph Lossie. That's the homie in New York City. I'm going to tell you, he'll be, he'll be on our head. Boy, you say something against Jordan or anything, he'll be on you. Shout out to him. Um. I've said it. I said this earlier in the year. I think I said it at the end of last year. I'm going to buy an Air Force One this year. I feel it's necessary. And especially considering a lot of the like OG talk me and George talk about and a lot of the nostalgia we uh, we bring up. I feel like there are particular pairs of sneakers in your closet that you're supposed to own. I feel like a pair of Air Force Ones should be in everyone's closet. And it should be a pair that you're willing to wear at some point. I do believe in having something dope and classic in your closet, even though if you won't wear it. That's why I maintain the three phone posits that I have, or four. I got pewters, coppers, royals, stealths. Them the only phone posits I feel like are necessary, period. In all honesty, I could get rid of most of those and keep the royals. Royals are one of the most iconic things of all time. So... um. With that being said, I do feel like I need a pair of Air Force Ones. And I almost copped the snakeskin Air Force, Air Force Ones today, and I might. I'm just not sure how, how big I am on all white Air Force Ones anymore. 
the LeBron threes, the St. Vincent Mary's um, pair drop, St. Vincent St. Mary's drop this week. LeBron threes are, are weird, okay, because I would probably say with like a one, between one and four years, we've been screaming for specific pairs of LeBrons to drop, and threes were one of them. With Zoom Generations, ones, threes, some people love twos. I do not understand why anybody likes LeBron twos. LeBron shoes might as well, O-Lyman cleats, them joints are huge, all right? Um, those, and obviously we love eights, we love sevens, uh, I can't think of sixes, I don't think we're too high on sixes, uh, nines, like, there's certain LeBrons we want, we beg for retros, and they retro the three, and we really don't care about it, we like the way it looks visually online, and we like the way it looks, um, we just love the way the sneaker looks, but the sneaker is a boot, and retroing boots, that's a hard one. It's going to be hard to get people on board to cop LeBrons that are retro if they're not the ones that we fell in love with, like Cannons or South Beaches or LeBron O'Palmers or the camo joints that never came out. It's going to be a real hard task to get everybody on board with going back to cop twos and, and threes and fours and stuff like that. You're going to have to release all those ones that were only – for him or PEs, because that's the only way you're going to get anybody to copy any of these LeBrons. Um, another Paul George three. I know George disagrees with this, but Paul George is clearly a top tier athlete at Nike. I mean, Paul George sneakers come out every single weekend. Not even a question. I might do If another Paul George comes out, he must have about five pairs. It's already like, I guess you want to say collaboration with NASA. I got to read up on that NASA Paul George connection because he obviously wanted to go to space one day uh we also have like a couple tailwinds dropping a lebron low uh i think the kobe fours dropped this week kobe four is another shoe so i know everybody is excited about kobe fours and they want kobe fours but I, i'm here to tell you nobody really wants kobe fours like i say this all the time Everybody has a, a a super infinity, affinity, affinity, infinity, whatever the word is, to like one or two models in the Kobe signature line. There are like one or two pairs, like I told George. We both like fours. I like five. No, he loves fours. I like fives. And we both love eights, okay? And then we love the colorways and themes of a lot of the other models, so that blinds us to the fact that that shoe is perfect for whenever that particular era was. Now, a lot of these Kobe's are kind of bulky. Kobe 4's, to me, even back in the day, that's why I like the 5 more than the 4. The 4 was always really thick. It was really thick, the sole was thick, and it was a lot wider than 5's. So I could never really, you know, get with them. There were certain ones that George had, like UN, uh, the... USC joints, um, you know, in the OG colorways, like the Martin Luther Kings and stuff like that. Pairs that, like, were really hard to get. MVP, I believe, was a four. Um, I love them, but Kobe 4s, these will sit. Like, these aren't going to fly. And that's the Pro Show Del Sol. They're not going to fly. You know, I, I expect them to sit everywhere. And if they do sell out, they'll sell out Sunday, Monday. And you'll see a lot of these on go and everywhere for retail, under retail. Kobe 4s, they're just not, they're not it. And I feel like Nike isn't promoting retro Kobe's like they should. You don't see anything special. Like when you open up the sneakers app, there's no Kobe Bryant in there. There's no story behind it. There's no understanding of the sneakers. I don't understand why they're doing that to the Kobe. You open up the sneakers app and it's all about Nike SB Jordan 1s. And like a story, cut materials, um, spinning sneakers. It has all the hoopla for this other stuff. The Kobe sneaker? Kobe sneaker. Here you go. Uh, the LeBron 16 Hot Lavas dropped this week. Look, man. I mean, when does it end? Like, when does it end? Enough with the LeBron sneakers that look like something else. It's one thing to, like, come out with one, but to come out with two on the same day, a black version and a white version, fam, 
Cut it over. LeBron's not in the playoffs. It's over. Scrap any LeBron 16s you have getting ready to come out. Scrap them. Prepare that 17. We want to see pictures of that 17. Uh, and I think some denim Air Force Ones are dropping. Uh, let's talk about the Air Tech Challenge 2. Uh, um, Air Tech Challenge 2s are top five greatest sneaker of all time to me. I think to George, too. I'm not sure. But Lavas, let's talk about these must-haves in your collection. You must have an Ultra Boost. Just one. And it has to be a 1.0. To me, this is the discussion I'm having with the listeners of what I think every sneakerhead who has a lot of sneakers should have. If you're a person that rotates 10, 15 pairs, then this conversation isn't for you. I'm talking to the ones with 100, 200 plus pairs of sneakers. If you have over a hundred pair of sneakers and you don't at least have some of these or a few of these or a couple of these, your collection is null and voided to me. If you don't have any colorway of an Ultra Boost 1.0 and you got over a hundred plus pair of sneakers, your collection is voided to me. Now look, everybody, you can fix this. You can go to goat.com slash sneak this. You can fix this. You can go get yourself some 1.0s. If you don't have a foam posit, and George don't got a lot of this stuff, so, you know, George, George is George. If you don't have a foam posit, you got to have a foam posit. Like I said, you don't have to have all of these, but it'd be dope to have. You got to have some of these. Foam posit is the one sneaker that came out one day and is still being made to this day and has never came out in a different version. They tried other versions. They tried flight posits. They tried other versions of flight posits and putting foam here and let's put a foam on it. They tried it, but there's nothing that beats a foam posit. I mean, a, a foam posit one and a foam posit pro. Period. Nothing that beats those. Any colorway, fire. We might not be able to wear them and rock them like we used to back in the day, but don't be disrespectful to the phone posit. Air Tech Challenge Lavas. They're must-haves. I have those ones, the blue joints, the kumquats, and I think I have another colorway. I'm not sure. It's hard to keep track of some of this stuff. I actually think, I remember back in the day, people would steal sneakers from my closet and I wouldn't know until I wanted to actually wear it. You know, that, that's what sucked about having a lot of sneakers and a lot of homies and catch in and out your house sometimes. Um, but Air Tech Challenge 2s are a must-have for a sneaker collector. Even if you're just a little bit familiar with them. And, and essentially, they're, they're thick, high boots. Uh, the Yeezy 2, that's the soul of a Yeezy 2. Man, I want to get it out. I don't know why I didn't take it out. Um, that's where the soul came from for the Yeezy 2. Uh, these shoes are respected across all trainers. You buy a trainer to this day, you can see where they took elements from an Air Tech Challenge 2. You can see where they took the idea of the sole, the thickness, uh, the height, some of the materials. You can see all that. Sorry about that sound, if you can hear it. My hat keeps hitting the microphone, microphone arm. Um, those, that's those sneakers that you need. A Concord 11. I would say any 11 and a, a, a Space Jam and a cool gray. And, oh, a uh, Bread 11. Those are cool. Those suffice. You know, if you got that and you ain't got a Concord, all right, I get it. But you got to have a Concord in your collection. All right. Like I said, this conversation is for the 100 plus sneaker sneaker heads. Okay. I'm not talking to the one with 30 and 40 because you know what? If you have the strength to commit to 30 or 40 pairs, then you don't need to be worried about classics like this. You don't worry, worry about it because it, it's, it's irrelevant to you. You rotate them and you move them and that's dope. And that's for people that have ultimate commitment. I don't have that commitment. I can't stop. I'm addicted. Basics. Uh, man, what are my other pairs? Oh, Air Max 1. You don't got an Air Max 1 in your collection? Fam, what are you doing? Air Max 1 is the greatest Air Max of all time to me. My, I'm sorry, no, no. Air Max 1 is the greatest Air Max of all time universally. The greatest Air Max of all time to me is Air Max 97s. That's to me. But 
I respect the Air Max One as an entity and as an entirety over the whole genre of Air Maxes and runners as being the greatest Air Max of all time. To everyone else, and I acknowledge it and I respect it. It's like back in the day when like everyone you knew Michael Jordan was the greatest player of all time, but you didn't want to admit it. You didn't want to, you know, you just you still fought it. Nah, fam, I, I like Penny. Nah, Iverson. Oh, nah, everybody likes Jordan. I, I, I like Sean Kemp. Look, man, we all knew in our hearts Jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time, and that was period. We could defend it. We could talk on the playground about Sean Kemp, Iverson, Peyton, Shaq. We could talk about everybody we wanted to that day in that era. Michael Jordan was the greatest of all time. Air Max 1 is the greatest Air Max of all time. You can prefer 90s. You can prefer 97s. You can prefer uh, 92s. You can prefer tailwinds. You can prefer 180s. You can prefer uh, 95s. You can prefer uh, tailwind 1, 2, 3s, 4s, whatever. You can prefer 720s. You can prefer all of those. Nothing compares to the Air Max 1, period. Must have for your collection. And that was a number five, and I can't think of it right now. And I know I've said it before. Um, it's probably something more low-key or casual. Um, it's probably a Jordan 1 or something like that. But that was some of the sneakers that I feel that you must have. And I do have a top ten list, which me and George have discussed before. Um, but I feel like if you have the opportunity and you genuinely care about quality, hopefully they come out with quality. They did retro quality. Last time with the Air Tech Challenge 2, and you care about that OG sneaker, you care about that era, you care about that Agassi, you care about that flash, you care about when sneakers were, were must-haves, you care about when you used to take the toothbrush and, and the pie pan and get the, the, the dishwashing soap and scrub your midsoles. If you care about that, even remotely, if you're young and you respect that, Get yourself some Air Tech Challenge 2s. Even if you wait for them to go on sale, even if you wait for them to go to the outlet, get some Air Tech Challenge 2s. Facts. And that's coming from me, Greg. Think this podcast. George, I feel like he'd, be, he'd feel the same way, but you never know. George is a loose cannon. Um, StockX. Woo! Let's talk about StockX, all right? So, uh, if you follow us on Instagram or Twitter, and pretty much if you follow any sneakerhead or anything that's happening on, on social media, you will see that there is quite the talk about Travis Scott's being bought from StockX and a lot of pairs coming back as fakes, okay? Now, I've had a lot of people talking junk to me. Fam, you guys think you know everything. Fam, I know what this is. You guys are sponsored by GOAT. Fam. You know what's funny is we say fam a lot, George and I, but we absolutely hate fam. But we still say it. I have no idea why. And that doesn't mean we don't like when you guys say it to us. Look, it's one of those things, all right? It's like I, was, I lived in the Bay Area. Fam, when I lived in the Bay Area, I moved from Oregon to the Bay Area, and I was in sixth grade, I had never heard of Hecka and Hella. Had never heard it. But that was the wave with everybody else. I couldn't stop saying it. I said Hecka after everything. Yo, that's Hecka tight. Yo, that's Hecka hot. Let's go outside, man. Hecka fast. Yo, he Hecka fast. I was saying that like a wacko. Anyway, what am I talking about? I forgot. What was I talking about? Oh, StockX. So, a uh, fam. I'm on a tangent. I'm just talking. Um... Shout out to the Raptors for winning. I'm going for the Bucks. This is one of the worst hats of all time if you're watching on YouTube. Um, I remember when I thought this was fire. This came out and a Grizzlies one came out by Mitchell and Ness. And they put the 1995 on it, the year when the team became uh, part of the NBA. One of the worst hats of all time. Walking around with a 1995 on your hat, stop it. And for the person, yo fam, you were born in 95? No, I'm old, all right? I was born way before 95. Um... StockX. The word I like to describe, the word I like to, to use is like humility, okay? And then that might sound a little funny from, you know, somebody who, who calls him his sneaker podcast the best sneaker podcast, period. And I mean that. Um, but humility goes a long way, okay? And when we posted about StockX and stuff like that, it got a lot of traction from people. Like, I'm talking, people hit us up like, fam, how do you know? Yo, fam, I just copped a pair. Should I cancel it? What do I do? What do I do? Help me out. Are these authentic? I just got mine in. Check the threads. Look, 
Ain't nobody authenticating nothing based off pictures, so don't send it to my DM. You can send them, and I will tell you if they look like it or not. But if it, if I say they don't, if I say they look fake, and you throw them in the trash, that's your fault. If I say they're authentic and you were my side, and the homies start bagging on you, that's your fault. I'm just a sneaker podcast providing free content for to get you guys through the week. Um, but I know StockX. And everybody that was associated with StockX, they seen the tweets. It wasn't just us making posts. It wasn't just us on Instagram. It was a lot of people making these claims that StockX is sending out fake pairs of Travis Scott's. Now, let me express something to you guys. Is this podcast a little bit affiliated with GOAT? Yes. Have we been sponsored by GOAT? Yes. Have we run ads for GOAT? Yes. Have we received compensation for those ads? Yes, we have. But let me tell you this right now. As of right now, we are low-key a part of GOAT. We have our website, goat.com slash sneak this, but we're not receiving any compensation right now. Now we're still in talks and we're trying to figure that stuff out. And this isn't to brag or anything like that. This is just to make it clear that what we're saying about StockX has no effect, has nothing to do with us being a part of GOAT. I'll tell you this now. StockX wants to give us a call and talk about a sponsorship. I'm answering the phone. Like I said, we're under no obligation or under understanding or anything to go right now go is taking care of us we appreciate go we use go app we love go app i love the people that work there the communication that i've had with them they have been nothing but great to us but let's be clear as of right now we have no contractual obligation to go so everything that i'm saying about StockX is my personal our personal own opinion from the podcast and it's based off everything you see on social media one thing I tell people about this podcast is this podcast isn't about this contest isn't like the stuff that we create. Me and George create certain things, the sneaker draft, the Hall of Flames. We create certain things, the sneak disc sneaker awards. There are certain things that we create to provide participation from the listeners. But the content of the sneaker culture comes from the people that are in the sneaker culture. When somebody sends me something to read and says, yo, what do you think about this? Fam, have you seen this? Yo, take a look at this. Yo, look at this. I'm telling you guys that. Me and George, we're sneaker an- uh, sneaker analysts, okay? We're like Sports Center. all right? That's what we're doing. We talk about everything, good or bad. That doesn't mean we can't be a part of it. That doesn't mean that we don't like it. That doesn't mean we hate everything. I can tell you right now. I can say right now, Travis Scott's are trash. I can say that right now if I want. That doesn't mean I think this Jordan 1 is trash. That doesn't mean that I won't think the next game is, tr- is fire. Travis Scott is fire. It's just personal opinions at that moment. <laughs> StockX is seeing it all. They're seeing it all from us. I had one or two people from StockX uh, hit me up. StockX in Detroit. Let's be clear on that. And I have homies that work for StockX. And this is nothing against them or anything like that. I have a duty providing an informational podcast to just share my thoughts and opinion on it for everybody who listens. And this is strictly with regards to the Travis Scotts. Okay? In this current event of the non of social media you see everybody yo i took my pair to riff they said it was fake i took my pair to flight club they said it was fake i took my pair here they said it was fake i took my pair here we compared it to this they said it's fake we took the insole out we did this it's missing this they said it's fake this is out there on the internet a lot of it's on twitter but it's out there so this isn't us starting something based off anything. George and I don't own Travis Scott's. George and I, based off the price of Travis Scott's right now, George and I will probably never own Travis Scott's. Now, I do own Travis Scott Lowe's, and anybody listening to this podcast, I would appreciate any type of help whatsoever. You can help George if you want, but always think of me first because just because I'm asking you right now. If I'm in a situation to where there's a possibility that we've received so much inventory on one sneaker model that we are actually accidentally populating the pool of uh, Travis Scott to the consumer with replica pairs, you must stop selling those pairs. 
humility. There's absolutely no problem for StockX to say something like, you know what, due to recent activity on social media, we come to the understanding that people aren't currently trusting our process in authenticating Travis Scott Jordan 1s at this moment. As of right now, we are going to pull them off our app, pull them off our website until we can get a clear, concise understanding on how to authenticate these pairs. This is no confession that we aren't currently authenticating them perfectly But in order to make sure that we satisfy the consumers and make sure that we take care of our clientele, we're going to make sure that we're absolutely 100% positive on what we provide back to the public and for our sellers and our buyers. That's it. That's all you got to say. Because nobody is not buying off StockX. We buy off StockX. I'm not going to lie to you. This isn't going to hurt StockX sales and stuff like that now it could hurt you know people trusting on these super duper hyped pairs i do feel like you feel very safe when you go to a stock x goat flight club and everywhere that if i walk in here and buy something for anywhere from 500 up it's authentic like i couldn't imagine spending 500 bucks in a reputable consignment location and it becomes fake like it's fake. And and the problem that I have with this is I don't know if StockX or anybody has return policies, but you're going to have to provide some type of return policy or some type of insurance on sneakers like this. I think everyone who buys a pair of a pair of sneakers $500 and up and you can provide proof that this pair is the pair that you received from StockX and this pair that you received isn't 100% authentic, you should be able to send it back for a store credit at least, uh, exchange, a refund, something. A lot of people are getting back from StockX. Look, it passed, it passed through us, you know, and if you send it back, it pass again. You want your money back? It ain't happening, Captain. Now, you can sell it on our site if you like that's not the response that people want people want to say oh man you know what go ahead and send us pictures in areas that you believe are are not authentic you know please let us know please let us know areas that we could find in research that you feel that this period you received from us isn't authentic Please, like it's, it's all we ask for. And if it becomes overwhelming, you got to take them off the site. This is about Travis Scott Jordan 1s. This isn't about any other sneakers on StockX being called fake. I have never received anything fake from StockX. I've never received anything fake from GOAT. So I can't make those type of claims, okay? I am specifically talking about what the sneaker culture has provided for content for sneaker creators to discuss you got to take them off you got to have that humility you got to say you know what there is we believe that we haven't made a mistake but we're not too full of ourselves to go back and reevaluate to just double check it would be so much appreciated and let me explain something to you hey man a coupon code for your troubles would be nice every once in a while some free shipping be nice Every once in a while for debacles. People got to you gotta understand that. Shout out to Charles. You know, he came through last week and talked about his store, Legend. That's going to be opening up here on the west side of Phoenix or the west side of Arizona. Customer service matters. A nice little email. Everybody gets those emails from StockX. Yo, fam, you want to sell today? I don't know. I say fam for everything and I got voices for every email. I don't even know why StockX email sounds like that to me. I open up a StockX email and it's like, fam, where you been, cuh? You got sneakers you want to sell? I got you, B. Go to, sne- go to StockX.com. That's how all their emails sound to me. Um, but it'd be nice to get an email that says, yo, go ahead and enter this code for $20 off your next purchase. Fam. Or the code is, is 100% fees for your next sale. Something. StockX is a public billion-dollar company. You got to make sure you keep us happy. 
because at some point we might not want to be paying these prices. And I'm seeing a lot of people saying and going, if I don't get it retail and I don't get it here, I don't want it. I'm seeing a lot of it. So you got to be careful with stuff like that. And I'm telling you, all the other consignment shops and all the other apps and websites, they just sitting back with their feet propped. All right. Sometimes you can get too big for your britches. You got to practice a little humility. And that humility is that that's just a message from us. The best sneaker podcast, period. All right. <laughs> so you got to practice a little humility. That humility Humility matters. Uh, you know, I wish that Nike and Adidas and a lot of these companies would practice humility. A lot of times they hear our complaints and stuff like that, and it's completely ignored. Um, it's ignored because they know that we're too enthralled in sneaker culture to to do anything else about it but complain. Like I said, the Jordan 4, I bought them. I love them, but they're trash. But I don't have a choice. I have to keep my Jordan 4s because it isn't like I, I got five more years to wait for another one to dry. It took forever for these to come out. You think I'm about to take these back? No, they're trash, but they're mine and they're fire. If Nike would practice that humility or Jordan Brand would say, you know what, we know we're providing sneakers that are of less quality and we know they're expensive, but you know, we're trying to do our best to make sure that more of our general releases have the exact same quality put into our collaborations, have the exact same quality put into our whatever models, have our something. We just like to hear it. We like to have their reassurance. When Jordan Brand talked about the remaster program, where cats were flipping their lids. Like I seen cats like, oh, like I can't wait. And they were like 10 more dollars. I think they, everything went up to like 180, 190. Cats was like, it doesn't matter. I need that premium. Man, I think remaster program sneakers might have been worse than what we got. That's a 100% fact. All right. But that humility, that humility, I seen an Air Max 98 coming out covered in dashiki kente cloth. And by the way, we were the first podcast to talk about that. Soul Collector Show, whatever, they weren't. All right. We were the first podcast to discuss why does these sneaker companies think anything black related has to be African print? It's annoying. But the humility to say, uh, you know what? We have absolutely no idea what we're doing with our Black History Month pack. We just kind of, you know, go with the flow and think what's what. And that's it. All right. Everyone that's buying Nikes from there aren't African. All right. We're black Americans from African descent, Jamaican descent, Haitian. We're from a Cuban. Like we're from a lot of areas of dark skin color. Africa, we're from a lot of areas. But we're still essentially Americans. There's some black history here. You can make something paying homage to... Man, I was reading a long time ago about Martin Luther King or something. And it was talking about this car he drove or a car that he rode in. And I remember this lady, I think we were in Atlanta at the museum. And it was like a recording. I don't remember what it was. I could be... I could be wrong on this or mixing up stories, but they talked about the color paint of this car that Dr. Martin Luther King rode in and how it shined and it had this glitter and whatever. Yo, put that on a sneaker and tell the story. Put a card in the sneaker and says that this color of this sneaker represents uh, an iconic moment in history seeing Dr. Martin Luther King riding in his... Something! It ain't got to be African dashiki and, and stuff. Like, good God. Humility. Say you have no idea what you're doing. Anybody who would like to, to help us out, please do. Reach out. Reach out to some African Americans. Reach out to a black person. Adidas. Nike as well. I see a new Oswego coming out that's supposed to represent the LGBTQ community from Adidas. You know what it is? It's white with a rainbow out a rainbow midsole. Fam. Adidas, Nike, Reebok, Philo, whoever. The LGBT community, LGBTQ community isn't just rainbows. 
You did it with one round of pairs? Okay, cool. You did it with another pair? Okay, cool. There is more to communities than what you only know. Go into these communities. Talk to the LGBTQ community and say, hey, we're not familiar with this. Go to the history of neighborhoods. There are a lot of LGBTQ communities, LGBTQ communities in every single state that have some type of story. Express those stories. Share those stories with us. Let us know a story that we're not aware of. We don't need to know that every, we don't need another rainbow shoe to represent the LGBTQ community. We get it. A rainbow is a symbol of their community. We get it. You can put a rainbow in the shoe if you must. But some type of story or something, you know, this neighborhood in San Francisco, this neighborhood in Texas, California has a long history of wh whatever the case may be. Pay homage to these cultures and these communities. Stop being, uh, I guess, patronizing asinine, whatever it may be, show some humility. That's all we ask for. It's perfectly fine to show some humili humility and say we have no idea what we're doing. Uh, one thing I want to talk about as well is Converse. A lot of people, and I just saw them pop up on the sneakers app probably about an hour ago before I started recording, a lot of people were overlooking these new Converse that dropped. Um, they were designed by Tinker Hatfield, and I know how you all feel about Tinker Hatfield. Doot, 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 doot. Look, I appreciate every single thing Tinker Hatfield has done for the sneaker community and what he's designed, but it's over, okay? There are too many other creatives out here doing things to still be chasing down what Tinker did back in between 80-something and 90-something. It's over, Give that man the most ultimate pension and retirement plan that you could possibly throw in a package, Nike, and let that man ride off into the swoosh sunset. There are some young, creative individuals out here we need to start paying attention to, all right? I want my kids to say, yo, I got a... Uh, Something, you know, I don't want my, I don't want my kid talking about Tinker Hatfield unless he's writing a, a report, all right, in 19, in, in 2040, whatever the case may be. Uh, these Converse, I'm telling you guys, they're being overlooked. It's called the Star Series BB, they're basketball sneakers, Converse Times Tinker Hatfield. What the, Times? What the heck is this? Dear God, I'm trying to give you guys props and it's a Times Tinker Hatfield. Dude, I mean, look, they're fire, okay? A lot of people are overlooking them. I'm telling people, you should cop these. They're like a Chuck Taylor and they're a basketball shoe, but they look easy to wear. Buy them off sneakers. Buy them off the Converse website because if they do suck in hand, you can take them back. I will say that. But stop overlooking them. These joints are very clean. Um, there's a white, black, and I like how they're coming out with the high top version and the low top version at the exact same time. I think a lot of companies need to explore that. I know why they don't, because they feed off that must-have now. There are certain people like myself and George who understand a low-top version is most likely going to come out in things. Um, when the LeBrons drop every year, George and I always say, I want to see what the low-top version looks like. We look for the low-top version. They're coming out in this new Converse basketball sneaker, the high-top version and the low-top version, the exact same time. I think that's dope. Now, you could... Put yourself in a corner because everybody might be like, oh, thank God. I don't got to buy the high top version until the low top version comes out. I think these companies, they know, all right, I'm going to buy this high top version. I'm going to buy this now. It's like Jordan 1s. I'll buy this high top version now, but when the low top drops, whew, copped. And I'm not wearing the high tops anymore. Um, George and I, I think we've sold most of our high top Jordan 1s just because we got the Jordan Low versions. The only Jordan Lows that we don't have of the OG models are... The gray joints that came out just in European Europe. I think maybe George got them. I don't know. And the Chicago one lows. We didn't get those. So, and I don't know what's up with Jordan Brand and the Black Toe. Like, I mean, is it coming out? What? You give us a fat one SB Black Toe, whatever. Fam, give me the OG cut. Cut the bullshit. All right. <laughs> um, but yo, check out those Converse. I think them joints are super duper clean and uh, super duper fire. Uh, 
There are a few other things that I want to talk about. I think I'm going to talk about those with Jay this week if we decide to record again and probably save something uh, to discuss with George um, as well, get his opinion on a few things. Um, One thing I will say, I'm not sure if anybody's listening yet, the new Tyler Creator album is off the hook. Already a contender for album of the year to me. You don't got to agree with it. To me. Easy listening. I press play, and I actually listen to it all the way through. I've listened to it all the way through probably about nine times. Shout out to Apple, too, for AirPods. God, I don't know how I went so long without AirPods. AirPods allows you to listen to your music freely. I could walk around the house with one in my ear and still participate in all family functions, discussions, conversations, play with the kids, and not miss a beat on new music. I never understood how people had time to listen to new music. I've never been the individual to walk around with headphones on my head all the time. I don't go to the gym enough to listen to music there. Um, so with new music, like I still haven't listened. I Actually, no, I'm sorry. I listen to the Khaled too. It's dope. Well, it's not better than Tyler Creator, but it's dope. But I never understood how people found the time to listen to music. It's, it's AirPods. And I know people still found time before AirPods. But for me, AirPods are literally keeping me involved in the music community and what's hot and what's not. I probably would have never listened to the Tyler Creator album if it wasn't for AirPods. I listen to nothing but podcasts in the car. I listen to, shout out to the homie Mike. I listen to um, his podcast. I listen to, obviously, Soul Searching. I listen to, um, you know, it's on YouTube. I listen to my homie uh, Lowe's The Bread and Butter Show. Like, I listen to nothing but podcasts. I listen to some that my mom requests, Joe Budden. Uh, I listen to my own podcast because I, I listen to my own podcast, not for narciss- narcissistic reasons. I listen to my own podcast to help improve. If I listen to the podcast and I hear just the inkling of a sound that I don't like, my focus next week is to make sure that sound isn't in there. I pay attention to my ums and my likes and my... My mouth smacking and and the repeat of words and the repeat of phrases. I do pay attention to that. So um, I try my best to make sure I improve as a podcaster. And I listen to see what George does too. Like I try to help him improve as well. He hates and doesn't care about anything. But, you know, I do it for us. I don't think George has ever listened to an episode of our show. Ever. I think he might have listened to the Dion Point one. And that was it. Other than that, George doesn't listen to it. Um... Trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about or something else I want to show. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I really wanted to do a top 10 list this week, but I couldn't put together one. I was extremely busy at work. So, you know, a lot of people have been asking when we're going to get back on the top 10s. We're definitely going to get back on the top 10s. Don't think I forgot about it. Um, And we're probably going to have to do a lot of redos because George and I have done a lot of top 10 lists so i'll probably do our part twos or some revamped or some second thoughts on some uh and i appreciate the guests we've had we've had bruce hatu uh coming through talking about the understanding of marketing of sneakers uh and let me me go back to that just a little bit i kind of talked about it a little bit last week i still get messages from people like yo you believe that bullshit bruce was saying yo bruce is full of it this and that and whatever i'm here to provide something from somebody who's a part of something that we're not whether we agree or not or if he's completely wrong or not that's just not up to us we could have an opinion against it and talk against it and there were certain things that bruce said that we were like "Mm, i don't know about that and then, but the listeners, the DMs and the text messages, oh my God. I'm like, fam, I don't know if that's true or not. I am talking to somebody who was actually directly involved in this stuff. So I can't tell somebody, me being a person from the outside looking in, you don't know what you're talking about. I'd be a fool to do so. That's not how it works out here. Now, I can go back and do my own research or I can go talk to somebody else who does the exact same thing he does. I can go talk to them and say, yo, how do you feel about this? Or get their perspective on something or ask them the exact same questions and see what they say. I can do that. But I can't tell somebody who's a part of something that I'm not that they're wrong or whatever. I could just just disagree. But if I disagree, I better go do some research to figure it out. Shout out to Charles of Legend. I talked about him a little bit earlier. Uh, His shop opens up June 8th officially so i'm excited for that i'm excited for him i'm excited for arizona you know we gotta have somebody who's focused on on 
communication, focused on good customer service, and focus on, you know, being a part of the community. That's what matters. Um, and focus on solely what they're doing at that moment. People try to be too big for their bridges. They try to be dope. They try to look fly. They try to do way too much. All right. That's only been successful a few times. So you got to watch yourself. Shout out to Charles. Um, we had the homie um, Sock Jig on. Let me tell you something. Sock Jig threw out some knowledge, fam. Sock Jig to this day is still throwing out knowledge. If you're not following Sock Jig on Twitter, you missing out because he throws gems out there on how to cop and stuff, but nobody seems to listen. So if you want to sit here and complain about bots and proxies and what's happening and what you're doing and what's that, then sit there and complain about it and take that L, you know, uh, take that L on the head. All right. Because if you're not out here paying attention to these tips, then that's on you. All right. Like I said, I appreciate everybody who listens on iTunes. I appreciate every single person that listens on Spotify. I appreciate every single person that prefers to watch us visually on YouTube. I appreciate everybody who likes, who comments, subscribes, who does every single thing they possibly can to interact with us. I appreciate all the DMs. I do. Um, I like to express that because... You know, I didn't feel like doing an episode today. I'm going to be honest with you. And I always talk about every week the goal is for us just to come back and do one. This is not an easy thing to do. And I'm not looking for any sympathy. And I'm looking not for any kudos. I'm not looking for any of that. I'm just looking to let you guys know that it's hard on our end. But the love and the appreciation, the reposts and the likes and the comments and the opinions, the disagreements, the agreements, it helps. It motivates you. It makes you feel like, all right, cool. Somebody is listening. Um, we're doing really, really well. Um, I can't stress that enough. When I talk about iTunes and Spotify, I don't care what any other podcast or shows or anything is saying. They're not doing better than us. That's <laughs> facts, dude. Um, and like I said, I love it. And I love the fact that it's something that we put our hands on. I put my hands, I put my heart into this. Like everything that you see on screen, these graphics, I make that. This editing, I do that. This light in my face, I bought that. These mics is mine. The closet even some of the stuff you see at the studio, that's mine, all right? Even though we pay the studio, but we go to a studio and pay because we want that quality for you guys every week. And I know this right here is fire quality because I could tell, I could hear it, that it's going to be some fire quality, um, even out of this closet. But George and I, we live really far apart, so it's hard for us to get together um, to do anything like this. Uh, but like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I don't want to keep, you know, rambling or whatever. Um, I wish I could grab something real quick to show you guys. I really want to take out something and show it. Um, you know what? Let me go ahead and pause. I'm going to grab something real quick for you guys. All right. I'm back. So I don't want to just wrap it up real quick. I do feel bad that I didn't do a top 10 list. I had really prepared to do one. Oh, I had really wanted to do one, but I just didn't prepare myself for it. Um, so like I said, if you listen in your car... Or you already know about these sneakers, then you're good. But if you could check out the YouTube, you can see what these sneakers look like. Shout out to the homie John King. He's out in Florida. We talk a little quite often. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people, they always hit me up like, yo, your homie is always on some other people, but he's never on you guys. Trust me. John gets on us too all the time, all right? But I take it on the chin. Like, it, it is what it is. If he says this episode sucks or if he says we're corny or if he says this stupid or if he has something against us, it, it's what this show's about. I can't talk about other people if I can't take it. It's perfectly fine. It's fine. So, you know, chill out. So just for John, I'm about to pull out one of my favorite Fila mind blowers, all right? This is a collaboration. When I talked about the amount of feelers that were released, this is a mind blower times community 54 mind blower. All right. I love feelers. These weren't free. I'm not looking for a feeler sponsorship. I respect OGs. These came out when I was in, I went to Black Diamond Middle School. So I think we were in eighth grade. We were in eighth grade because seventh grade I was at Park in Antioch. Shout out to Park. Look at this. The box slides out. 
The box is super trash, but you know, it is what it is. You got that feeler, that mind blower written. Damn. You sneakerheads love talking about quality. Look at this suede. Don't play with me. John, get yourself some feel of mind blowers. These joints got that Gucci color with that green, that red. Look at that butter. Look at that nap. Let me tell you something about your suede, all right? If your suede ain't nappy, it ain't happy. Look at that gold, look at that gold lace, you know, whatever them joints called, lace buckles, all right? Look at the inside of the city. Look at that gum sole, bruh. Look at that suede. Don't play with me. This suede is butter. This that suede that you put on your toast, all right? This that suede that you step light in. This that suede you put them jeans on top, you cuff them just right. You can't throw the swinger suede, the swinger cuff on it. The swinger cuff is a little bit much for these. You gotta just throw that, you gotta throw that subtle cuff on the tongue. Hope you can see this. The Fila Community 54. Fam, stop it. Look at that butter suede. If your suede ain't nappy, then you ain't happy. That's a collaboration. Stick with the collaboration theme today. Let's go with the, another collaboration on Packer. Now look, I don't care for these shoes whatsoever anymore. I think they're fire, but I don't care for them anymore. But it's the presentation. Packer. This was a sneakers and stuff and Packer collaboration, New York 2015 for the All-Star Weekend. <laughs> These are the Kamikaze 2 mids. That's the box. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, that's the box. Reebok Classics. Look. Come on, man. Actually, you know what? Look at that hat. The hat is whack. I like the colors, though. It's got a jalapeno on it. Look at this. Everything in this box is DS. All right? I can't wear these. They're boots. Look at them Sean Kim socks. Y'all don't know nothing about no Sean Kemp. This is Sean Kemp, all right? Y'all love talking about Blake Griffin. Y'all love talking about uh, Vince Carter. Y'all love talking about these other individuals, but you're not talking about Sean Kemp. This is Sean Kemp on these socks, fam. Don't be disrespectful. Shout out to Stans. They came with it. This is the stuff that I'm talking about, the additional stuff. You'll never see me walking around wearing these Sean Kemp socks except maybe in the house, all right? I've had these for about three, four years now. Never rocked them. Look at the stickers, the Packer, the Packer with the jalapeno. You don't know about that, we're from Arizona, man, say, it's the jalapeno, fool. Look at that, I love New York sneakers and stuff. Look at this, I said Packer is very good at the handwritten letters. This says, thank you and enjoy. It also came with like a token, like a subway token. I don't know where that went. I have a feeling, I can hear it rolling around in the box. Uh, here it is. It came with a subway token. Ah! And the subway token, it says sneakers and stuff and Packer. It's the little things that matter. I don't know if you can see that. It's the little things that matter. Uh, Sean Kim Kamikaze All Stars. Okay? Fire. Okay, the colorway is fire. The bottom is turning yellow because I haven't worn them yet. Um, had these for about three, four years sitting in the closet. I mean, if anybody wants to buy these, you know, 100 bucks, let me know. I don't care. Um, got the Reebok hang tags. I got the gray. These are a nine and a half if you want to buy them. I'm not on here to sell stuff, but I mean, I'm never going to wear them. This suede, woohoo! Toe box. That leather, fine. This is real good leather. This is that suede. This is that, 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 that clear sole. All right. These joints are fire. These are part of some of the best all star jerseys of all time. I think those are San Antonio's jerseys. This hat. All right. Look. I mean, the hat's a jalapeno with a basketball on it. It's not the most fire thing on earth. But look, you know, I might have worn it once. But look, it is what it is. Matches. These joints are clean, they're fire. And let me tell you something about Reeboks. Let's go this way. Kamikazes are probably gonna come out again, okay? I have a pair of the OGs that are DS at the top that Ryan gave me one of his, and I have one or two more other pairs, Kentucky Blues, and I have an OG black and white. Kemp's, people, there's a difference between OG Kemp's and these retro Kemp's, okay? Kemp's right here, the OG Kemp's, 
used to say K-E-M-P. It said Kemp on them, okay? None of these retros and stuff do. My OG black and whites do. So there's still Sean Kemp representatives, but man, if it's missing that KEMP, it sucks. Right here, they did put the 1996 for the year of the All-Star game, and that's dope. Bottom, it has the Hexalite. Hexalite might be, might be the most ineffective uh, sneaker uh, comfort technology of all time. It's actually ineffective and honestly pretty ridiculous, but you know, hey, it's part of an era. Uh, so I wanted to pull those out and show you guys. I don't know. I just didn't want to end the show the way it is. Uh, like I said, I appreciate everybody who watches, subscribes, likes, shares, comments, reviews. I appreciate everybody on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, everything, YouTube. I'm trying to get the video up as soon as possible. The podcast audio will be up, obviously, uh, tonight. You know, I'm really good at what I do. And I appreciate, you know, having the opportunity to be able to provide this content for you guys. You know, um, me and George, we pay for this, you know. So, um... Like I said, you got any questions, you ever want to just talk, chit-chat, hit us up, DM. We're always available to talk, and we always respond. Uh, nothing else. That's the sneak disc.